I'm recording this video about 23 hours before it's going to be uploaded. Tomorrow, or for me it's tomorrow, for you it's today. Saturday, March 12th, and it's going to be uploaded at 10 a.m. PST, something like that. So, our regular scheduled programming. But... If there is a trade between now, the time I'm recording this audio, speaking into this microphone, and the time this video gets uploaded, then that's my bad But Still, I do believe this video is being made in good faith. Let's talk about the Montreal Canadiens and Ben Sherratt, the defenseman that everybody's been talking about, is going to get traded soon, and who just hasn't gotten traded yet despite those talks. Plain and simple. Ben Sherratt is an expiring UFA to be. He's a pretty good stable shutdown defenseman, and... It's been kind of cemented everywhere, especially on this YouTube channel over the past few weeks, how Ben Sherrod is a valuable, minutes-eating, physical, shutdown defenseman who plays pretty well in his own zone, etc., etc., etc. But the reason this is a topic of concern is because the Montreal Canadiens heading into their rebuild, quote-unquote, with Kent Hughes, have not managed to pull off a Ben Sherrod trade just yet. The price has been reported of being upwards of a first-round pick and maybe some other stuff, too, Elliot Friedman noted earlier on in the year that he can very well see Ben Chirot going for a first-round pick, and because the Habs are in a position where Ben Chirot has been one of the more highly coveted defensemen in the NHL, it gets kind of concerning when you realize, okay, there's apparently a whole bunch of discourse going around this guy, he's apparently very valued by NHL teams, the price is already out there, all we're waiting for is just when he's going to get traded, but the fact is, he hasn't gotten traded yet. Which is sort of concerning for some, but for others, it's a little bit more of a wait-and-see kind of thing. We still have a week to go before the trade deadline. However, I wanted to bring up a different conversation that was brought up by Friedman as well as Sarah Vailey. This is where we're heading over onto... It's the Jeff Merrick show from four days ago. Three days ago for me, four days ago for you, because I'm publishing this video a day after I'm recording it. This is what Friedman said on the show on March 8th. I definitely think, for example, in Ben Sherratt's case, Montreal wanted to do this some time ago. But the buyers are just saying no. We have other options if your asking price does not come down. We then had ourselves Frank Saravelli on the recent edition of the Daily Faceoff. What is this called? The Trade Targets list? It's actually Trade Target Emoji, so... Trade target board, I guess, is what you're going to be able to call this. This was from a few days ago. Ducks Hampus Lindholm becomes the top blue line target. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and read this piece and get the scoop on all of the NHL and its trade candidates. But Ben Sherratt is indeed the fifth name on the list. Let's take a look at the scoop that Sarah Valley has on the formerly ranked fourth overall guy on their trade board, but who is currently ranked fifth instead. The feel is the Habs are like a duck in a pond with Sherratt. Calm up top, but paddling furiously underwater trying to get a deal done. GM Kent Hughes has made more than his fair share of calls, but a deal has not materialized. Hughes said previously the Canadians will not wait for the market in order to move Sherratt. The problem is, no one has met Montreal's asking price, which is to match what the Tampa Bay Lightning paid last season for David Savard with first and third round picks. We'll see if they get it. There hardly is a cup-contending team Sherrod would not improve. Sherrod is a minutes-chewing, dependable D-man who is also really well-liked in locker rooms. And so, from two different NHL media sources, we have had ourselves the idea that the Montreal Canadiens might have just set the price for Ben Sherrod a bit too high. Now, I didn't find the quote, but I did hear this on the radio earlier in the week on Sportsnet 650, but Elliot Friedman was also talking about how pretty much the price for a lot of these A guys, like the A-tier, top-of-the-line NHL trade chips, might be just a tad too high to the point that other teams just really start settling on B players instead. They don't go after Ben Sherratt because there are other depth defensemen that are also available that would be a lot cheaper. And because of the perceived notion that these top-of-the-line guys are a bit too expensive, it circulates the market a lot more around players who are not as good. Now, what do the Canadians have to gain from this experience? Well, nothing at all. In fact, this is a pretty bad thing if you're going out there expecting a Sherrod trade to be made. Especially if the price is what it is, and we have been kind of aware that this has been the price for a long time, it really gets you thinking, okay, teams know what the price is, a first and a third. The fact is, we don't have a team that has stepped up to the plate and given that price yet. 
It appears that Kent Hughes and the Montreal Canadiens are really going out there trying to get this done, so it really begs the question. If teams have known about the asking price the entire time, and the Canadiens have not said yes to any trade proposal, what are these teams offering instead? Like, Friedman said that he feels there is a first-round pick guaranteed, pretty much, in this conversation, so are teams only offering a first-round pick? Are teams only offering a first and a fourth or a fifth instead of a third? If that's the discrepancy over there, at what point do you think Ken Hughes should just bite the bullet and say, okay, fine, here's Ben Sherrod, we'll take your first and your fifth? To me, the difference between the third and the fifth isn't really all too grand, and so it kind of signals to me that no team has gone out there and even come close to matching what the Habs have for Sherrod as the asking price. Now again, we're a week removed from the deadline, so... Things can change. Teams can get desperate. Montreal can all of a sudden wane in what they think Sherrod should go for. They could definitely just decrease that bidding price if they wanted to. But they've been really stubborn about this, right? Ben Sherrod has been in the market pretty much for the past few months. Ever since the Canadians were sucking all those games under Dominic Ducharme, we've been having tons of conversations about Sherrod being on the block. In fact, I start thinking about the recent performance that Sherratt has had over the past few games here, because he started scoring some goals, he's really showed himself off in a very good way against good teams, that he can be a shutdown guy. Against the Vancouver Canucks in particular, I was super annoyed watching Ben Sherratt just neutralize a lot of Canucks rushes in the Canadian zone, because I was like, come on, the Canucks need those two points a lot more than Montreal does. And so, maybe we're seeing a little bit of a JT Miller situation here with Sherratt, where his recent play, where he has been scoring goals and he has been playing pretty well, is making it a lot more difficult for the Montreal Canadiens to get a trade done. Because, and I'm not going to say this is actually what's happening, but the Habs could potentially go out there and say, hey, yeah, that price, that first and the third round pick that we wanted earlier... That was the price for Sherratt when he was playing under Dominique Ducharme. That was the price for Sherratt when he was playing on a team where everybody was doing poorly. Now, everybody's doing pretty well, and Sherratt has had a pretty good amount of production coming out of him lately, too. And so, all of a sudden, yeah, it's not a first and a third anymore. It's a first and a third and maybe another fourth or a fifth or something like that. You very well could see Ben Sherratt's improvements over the past few weeks make the Canadians think that he should be worth even more, and thus increasing the likelihood that no NHL team is going to go out there and want to pay the price for Ben Sherratt because it's just too gosh darn expensive. And so, I want you to talk to me in the comments below, what do you think about this entire thing over here? Do you think the Canadians have sort of something to lose here with the way they're treating these Sherratt negotiations? What do you think is going to happen as well? Because... I'll tell you this, if Ben Sherrod is still on the Habs by the time the trade deadline is over, like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's a pretty big failure for Kent Hughes and the way he's GMing this team, especially considering where they wanted the Canadians to be at this time and where they feel they're going to be in the next few years. This is technically a rebuild. They're not afraid of using that word. So players like Ben Sherrod, players that are expiring and players that are honestly pretty okay... These are not guys that you can afford to lose for nothing or, quite frankly, re-sign. I don't think anybody out there in Montreal is saying that Ben Sherratt should be a long-term option for the Canadiens, so if there's a time to go out there and make a move, it's between now and the next week. Montreal's got to go out there and do something, and whether or not that means waiting for some team to go out there and bite the bullet and give up a first and a third, or the Canadiens just settle for a first or only a prospect or only some other thing instead... It would be seen as a pretty big L for them, to be honest, especially if they were saying the whole time, okay, David Savard, that's the price we're going for. It's the first and a third round pick. So let me know in the comments what do you think is going to happen. Do you think the Canadians settle for something less, or does a team eventually bite, let's say, at the last minute or two of the trade deadline, and they say, screw it, okay, here, your first and your third, take it or leave it, and Ben Sherrod eventually gets traded. I could see either happening, to be honest, but... The way the NHL market has gone around, it definitely is more of a seller's market. We have a lot more big-name assets going around there, and teams that appear to be interested are all sort of capped-out, strapped teams as well. So whether or not there's a three-team trade here or there, we'll see whether or not that happens once the trade deadline rolls around on Monday, or next Monday, not this upcoming Monday. It's going to be pretty interesting to see where players go, and Ben Sherrod is definitely one of them. So if you're a Habs fan, where do you think the line will be drawn? If you're a fan of any other team... Do you want to go out there and actually trade for Ben Sherratt, considering all the stuff that we had just talked about, the trade price being too high, some team maybe having to bite? If you're the buyer, what are your thoughts? I hope you enjoyed this video of Scholz 99.
and bye.